In this video, I'm gonna show you five practical ways that Apple Motion's motion tracking is so much better than what's found in Final Cut Pro. The first reason why Apple Motion's tracker is way better than what's found in Final Cut Pro is the ability to track individual effects. The first and most obvious way you would do this is, let's say I want to track a bulge filter onto this actress's face. While well, I would select the clip, I'll go up to Filters, Distortion, then select Bulge. I'll drag that filter over her eye, then if I go over to the left side, I'll see this center parameter. I can click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and then I'll just select Track. Now all I need to do is select Analyze, Apple Motion will go through and track this scene for me. And just like that, I have the bulge filter perfectly tracked onto our actress's eye. Another great example is if I wanted to track on a scrape effect to this particular clip. We could go up to filters, go down to distortion, and then select scrape. Now I could just drag this scrape effect roughly into position. Then we can go over and find the center parameter. I'll click on the down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and then select track once more. From there, we could drag the tracker roughly into position, and I'm gonna change the analysis method from automatic over to point cloud. I found that that worked particularly well for this scene. From there, we'll just push analyze. This will go through and track, and now you'll see that this filter is tracked perfectly into position on this particular shot. This can be a powerful way to save you a whole bunch of time from needing to manually track these effects into your scene. The next reason why Apple Motion's motion tracker is way better than what's found in Final Cut Pro is that you can do a four corner pin track. What I mean by that is in this particular shot, I have a woman looking at a green screen on her computer and I want to replace that green screen. All I need to do is import the footage that I would like to use for that. Then I will scale down that footage roughly to the scale that I want for that computer screen. And I'm gonna drop the opacity so I can clearly see what's underneath. We'll just get it so it's lined up directly in the center of that computer screen. From there, we'll go up to behaviors, motion tracking and select match move. After that, we'll need to go over to the left side and find the mode. It's set to object, let's change it over to point. Then from there, we can change the type from transformation over to four corners. You'll now see that I have four different trackers in each of the corners of this shot. All I need to do is click and drag these into position. Now with those in position, I'll make sure I'm on the first frame and I'll click analyze. Once it's done tracking, I can select my main shot and bring the opacity up to a full 100% and we can go ahead and play back and see that we have now replaced the screen on this computer very, very quickly. The third reason that Apple Motion's motion tracking is way better than what's found inside of Final Cut Pro is that you can lock on with a 3D camera onto any shot. In this particular scene, I have a man running down the road and I want to lock the camera to his movements. To achieve that, we'll go to the very first frame, we'll go to the very top and select add object, then camera. With that camera selected, go to the left hand side and locate your properties. In here, you'll see the position parameter. Again, we can click on the down arrow or just right click on that parameter, add a parameter behavior, then select track. From there, we'll just click and drag the shot of the man running down the road into this well and you'll see that that adds a tracker onto the screen. Go ahead and just click and drag that tracker into position. We'll get it right over his face just like so. Then from there, we can click analyze. This will quickly analyze the shot and you'll see how it's actually moving the entire video out of position. But it does introduce a new problem and that is that there are these black edges on the side that's very easily fixed. All we need to do is select the shot of the man and scale it up quite a bit. We could even reposition it to be a little bit closer to the center if we wanted. And if we push play, we should have a nicely locked on shot to his head very, very quickly. The fourth reason why motion tracking is so much better in Apple Motion than it is in Final Cut Pro is that you can track complex shapes which can work as track mats. Track mats are something that is found over in After Effects, but here in Apple Motion, they're actually called image masks. In Final Cut Pro, you can in fact track a shape mask, but you're very, very limited in that shape. You can't do a triangle or an octagon or any number of shapes that you might possibly need. Here in Motion though, it's very simple. In this shot, I just want to add in a basic mask that covers around our girl, so we could go ahead and select the Bezier tool and I'll just quickly create a shape around her just like so. 
Now that I have this shape, we can go on over into our properties and locate the position. We'll right click on that, select add parameter behavior and select track. From there, we can go ahead and drag in the shot of our woman on screen and we can disable the visibility of the Bezier mask. I'll go ahead and create this tracker to be the same size as the actress here and we'll push analyze. This will go through and quickly track our scene and you'll see how that mask is actually sticking pretty closely to her. From there, we can click and drag the Bezier shape directly onto the shot that we tracked. For whatever reason with this example, it's making the scale jump up by 200%, but to quickly fix that, we can just jump on over into the scale and set it back down to 100% and now it will be the same size. Now we actually have this tracked on mask on our actress. We could go on over into the masking settings and dial up stuff like the feathering, but then from there we could go into the filters and apply any kind of filter we might want. So I'll apply the bad TV effect and we'll want to make sure that the bad TV effect is not applied onto the mask, but it's actually applied here onto the actual shot. From there we can change the roll down to zero. And that's something that you should note. You can apply stylistic filters directly onto the mask. So you could use something like a bump map to create some really cool masking effects for your videos. Now that I have this effect, we could even go in, duplicate this shot, delete all the masks and bad TV effects, and I'll push command left bracket to drop it down. And you'll see how the mask is only affecting our actress here instead of the entire backdrop. A very rough example, but hopefully you can see the absolute potential of creating complex masks using Apple Motion. The fifth and final reason why motion tracking is so much better in Apple Motion than it is with Final Cut Pro is that you can use motion tracking with particle effects. Let's go ahead and quickly create a particle emitter. So we'll just go down, create a circle. I'll hold shift so that it's a perfectly symmetrical circle and we could disable the outline. We could dial in the colors right now, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll go ahead and leave it as is. Then from there, we'll go up to the top right and select make particles. If we play forward, you can see that these particles are now emitting from that emitter. With that emitter selected, we'll go ahead and click and drag it roughly into position. Finally, we'll go over to the left side, properties, right click on the position, select add parameter behavior and select track. Now we can go ahead and drag in the shot that we want to track and we could push analyze. So now you can see that this particle is being emitted from wherever this flashlight goes in our scene, which is really, really cool. You could go into your emitter settings and dial in everything you could possibly think of, stuff like speed randomness, speed, life. You could change its color to color over life. So now it's going to slowly get darker and darker. We could have the opacity go down to zero. So now you can get really, really creative with these different particle effects to get this looking exactly as you want it. And you could even lock into position all of these particles. So if you didn't want them flying out, but you want them staying on screen exactly where they are, you could go into your speed settings and set that down to zero. And we'll do the same thing with speed randomness. So now it's essentially just creating a line wherever that flashlight goes, which can be a cool way to replicate that whole Disney drawing on the screen effect that you might have seen before. So that is five reasons why the motion tracking is so much better in Apple Motion than it is in Final Cut Pro. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and you may wanna check out this video where I show you five super powerful built-in effects in Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.